Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another faction preview video for Fates Divided DLC. Now for this one, we'll be taking a look at all three southern tribes together, starting with Meng Huo, then moving on to Sha Mo Ke, and then Mu Lu. The reason why we're looking at them all together is because there's not too much to talk about them. There's a lot of constraining factors with these factions in this start. It's probably not the best start in my opinion, now some of you might want this marriage to happen and that's the most enticing thing about this start, but it also means Lady Zhurong is no longer a faction by herself in the 200 start, therefore you can't play her faction mechanic, which is one of the better ones in the Nanman faction in my opinion, she's very strong. But uh, that is fine, the story has to progress, and in this case the map is not loading correctly. Uh, but we'll take a look at it in game. It's a very fair balance between Meng Huo and Mu Lu. Sha Mo Ke has the you know short straw here. Uh, this is the map from I think 190. It's just the error on the pre-release build. We can ignore that. Meng Huo is given the easy starting situation, and that's probably true. I think Meng Huo and Mu Lu all have a pretty easy start. He has probably the easiest start since he's hugging the edge. He has both. Zhu Rong's land, which is the very western lands, and the Meng Huo started out in Jianning, which is the best commandery in the game. And you've combined those two factors and the fact that, you know, Lady Zhu Rong is a very strong character, her brother is a very strong character, Meng Huo is a very strong character, uh, you're set to go. Because you have the fires and you have elephants. Um, but with that said, well, let's just hop into a game and take a look at the details and see where things stand. Da Wang, Rujin. 人心不足，世道崩坏。你与祝融夫人虽成功安抚各部，但若不能团结所有族人，南晋迟早会堕入纷争。目录：那个协议小人仍在施法驱兽，与您为敌。必须先征讨他，才能使其余部落首领俯首
King Wu Tu Gu, you have his fealty, but you don't have him. So this is something that's really weird, actually. I know I know how you can explain it. Like, Wu Tu Gu is currently under Mu Lu, and Duo Si is currently under Sha Mo Ke, but we have Wu Tu Gu's fealty, which means we probably destroyed them, but we didn't con uh, confederate. So he ran away and joined Mu Lu, our enemy. That's a pretty logical explanation. And the other one is... Duo Si's fealty is currently owned by Mu Lu, but Duo Si is currently with Sha Mo Ke. So same logic, and also because Sha Mo Ke marries Duo Si's uh, sister, so they're in-laws, so that kind of works. And if you notice, that means each of us have two unique character art. Meng Huo, Lady Zhu Rong for us, Wu Tu Gu with Mu Lu, and Duo Si with Sha Mo Ke. Uh, Yang Feng here doesn't actually have unique art. And do we even have him? Yes, we do. So we do have him. And the Master of the 21 Ravines. Um, that's his title from Romance of Three Kingdoms. So pretty much every single character here uh, that has one of these unique titles comes from Romance of Three Kingdom. CA really dug into the book and every character that was named was made uh, because there's just lack of historical records on Naman characters. So Dai Lai Zhong Zhu would be Lady Zhu Rong's younger brother. We have his burning mace. The morale has been nerfed from 15 points to 10 points, and you can't stack this with the follower of the flame. A little bit of nerf, it's still insanely strong just by itself. And then Lady Jurong's with us, with her flying daggers, level 4. Ah Hui Nan has also joined us. Meng Yu, our own brother. Uh, Meng Ya Chang also joins us. Meng Jie. Uh, Meng Ya Chang, I believe, is actually quite useful. He gives faction-wide satisfaction. It's a very useful ability. Don't underestimate um, him. Uh, put him in your court if you can. Our court starts out very simple as well. Tribal council, cave lord, no visor, no seer. Uh, basically because our rank would just be not that low. Right. We're getting there. Because we start with the most land, so we're actually getting there. But our key advantage here, playing as Meng Huo, is because we have the fire weapons. And elephants, a very decent elephant and dungeon elephant. So that's our strength, and also our roster of characters, you know, controlling Dai Lai, controlling Meng Huo, controlling Lady Zhu Rong are going to help us. And uh, Mang Yachang is going to be great for a faction wide role uh, in the future with this satisfaction boost. So that's pretty much the rundown, actually. Uh, very straightforward, not much to talk about. There's not much to say historically. Honestly, the Naman factions don't become a relevant faction until 223 when they actually rebel. They're not savages. You know, this region, they are ethnically a different subculture, but they have assimilated a lot to Han culture. Meng Huo lived just like a regular Han person, was a very uh, wealthy man in a powerful clan in the region. So he's not this savage who lived in a cave, as depicted in romance. And they got bribed by Shi Xie after Liu Bei's death and got persuaded that it was in their interest to rebel against Shu and, you know, get paid from Wu to do so. It failed, but it was not a savage uprising historically, so there's not too much to read into this. We're just going to look at which generals we have, what's our starting situation, and uh, everyone has no reform, so there's nothing new there. So we're going to cut over to Mulu's side of the story and take a look at his roster as well as his starting positions as well. Uh, he's holding on to Jianning's capital, by the way, here, as well as uh, the Iron Mines. So he has half of Jianning. You know, whichever side you're playing, these two factions are going to war really hard in the beginning. Meng Huo has an easier time because he has better army at the start. He also have, you know, more armies at the start. And uh, you can directly take this right away, set him back keep moving. Although I believe Wu Tugu is sitting over here and he's insanely strong as a general uh, with his high evasion. But guess what? We have the counter to high evasion with the burning mace. So it's not like that's going to scare us as well. And the burn buff just makes him so much better. Uh, that lies hands down the best, you know, general. And we, Okay, so even our generic general has burn as well. That's a great start. Yeah, that's pretty much it, but a very good situation for us. Now let's move on to Mulu's side of the story. Da Wang, Jay Pian Tudi, Jung Zai Aichi, Wulun Nanbei, 
，皆是群雄激战之地，南境部族需同仇敌忾，共御外侮，方能保全自身。然而大王此时仍根基不稳。孟获与祝融夫人联手之后，已成最大阻碍。此二人齐心协力，其势必然远胜其各行其事之时。沙摩科亦是刚猛之躯，可谓强援，或能令其担当南蛮与大汉内外互通之责。欲行此事，须先令其臣服于你，待到各部归心。便可将刘璋逐出领地之外，亦可使汉人豪强不敢进犯。山林呼啸，万兽怒嚎，大王当借此威势，以取全胜。We don't have the mission to take on, you know, Meng Huo and Sha Mo Ke like Meng Huo has for us and Sha Mo Ke. We get a builder at the start. A very interesting、uh, statement about lumber rise of a nation, and we do have a situation statement here,、uh, which we're not going to read. It's pretty much what the flyby was saying. We have three tribes. We're fighting each other. Liu Zhang has some of the Nanman land. We need to chase him away, and that's where we find ourselves. And in terms of our roster, we have Dong Tu Na, Wu Tu Gu, Jin Huan San Jie, and that's it. These three are generic, and they don't have great traits, but that's fine.、Uh, Jin Huan San Jie, Wu Tu Gu. Well, Wu Tu Gu is insanely strong, as we mentioned. The axe is just a handful, and plus high evasion overall. Twenty percent extra on his armor, ten percent extra armor. 15, ah,、uh, 12% extra speed, 50 extra charge bonus. He has insane stats, and I think、uh, we're gonna find him very useful in our campaign. And if we take a look at where things stand, we have him in an army here, and then we're here, kind of isolated with ourselves, facing a bigger army. We're gonna have to use the, you know, town to our advantage in terms of defensive. He's not gonna get any stronger. This is really all he's gonna have. We're gonna have to hold against this. The only thing that's kind of you know working our favor is a tiger's got nerf. Dai Lai is not in this army, and、uh, they don't have any fire archers. Even though they can recruit them, I think they have Yunnan's fealty. Yunnan is the fire archer tribe, and Meng Huo has them. So this is something very valuable. And as you can see, whereas Meng Huo started out hugging the corner of the map, being very safe, we're sandwiched. You know, in between him, Liu Zhang, and Sha Mo Ke, and that's okay. It's not the worst scenario. We're at war at two fronts, but wait until you watch Sha Mo Ke start.、Uh, we have five pieces of land to their eight. We have one, two, three, four, five fealties. As we mentioned,、uh, Duo Si is kind of interesting, where we have his fealty, but we don't have the character because he's with. Uh, Sha Mo Ke, which is fair. We have Wu Tu Gu. If I had to get one, I'd rather get Wu Tu Gu. And Duo Si has those poison units, so that's kind of nice too.、Uh, we have half of Jian Ning and the entirety of Zhang Ke, I believe. Oh no, not the entirety. We're missing the capital piece,、uh, but we have the T as well as the trade port. We also have one piece of Jiaozhu,、uh, which is actually also kind of interesting. How we only have one piece here. Uh, we have a few armies on the field, three in particular. There's one more here holding a defensive position in the first battle against Sha Mo Ke. This is an easy win, and Dong Tu Na is going to do that for us. Only level one here in Zhang Ke. We can try to take that. He can come help. So they will be in charge of fighting, you know, your eastern front, and then you have to hold here out west, strengthen yourself.、Uh, he's going to be a tough foe. But once you beat him, you know, as the player, you should be pretty creative here. And you should be able to absorb his fealty. You can command your animals and your rituals,、uh, the pride mechanic,、uh, to victory out here. He has probably the one that's, I think, hardest to use. Like, I don't know. I haven't played enough、um, Mulu to make a call, but I found his mechanic, at least when I tried him when on launch, to be the weirdest one of the four factions to use. I think Meng Huo has basically no mechanic,、uh, just small bonuses. 
Uh, Zhu Rong has the most interesting one in my opinion, and also very clear in terms of how you want to set up your bonuses in what season. Uh, Sha Mo Ke has just, you know, you can be Han, you can be Nan Man, you can be a little bit of both. He can be the only one to become an emperor, which brings up a very interesting question of whether he can challenge for the throne uh, or restore the Han or get imperial intrigue, which I don't think he can, but that brings up the question since he is kind of this middle ground faction, whether he can get some of that action with the changes. I don't think he can because subculture wise, he's not Han. But it'll be interesting to see how he, you know, participate in only the emperor step where he can get an emperor seat uh, compared to the rest. So that's pretty much it uh, with Mubu. There's not a lot to see. There is no reform. Everyone starts out, you know, with nothing. Uh, but you do see where the restrictions are, right? The restrictions here are still applied because whereas Meng Huo has the advantage of moving all the restricted ones down, the other two factions will also have the disadvantage of having their tech restricted earlier on two of the three tablets because Zhu Rong had one tablet advantage, uh, Mulu has this one, and I think Shamoke has one, and then Meng Huo has all three. So Meng Huo is definitely the stronger faction in you know all the start dates, but this is even more highlighted here uh, as they all start out you know fresh from nothing again. And we also have less research rate. This is probably due to having less buildings, uh, less counties compared to Meng Huo and also some of the character differences and from the fealty because we have less fealty, uh, we have less research rate. So these are all things working in favor of Meng Huo and we have probably the second difficult start compared to all three factions. So with that said, let's move on to the most difficult Nanman start uh, with Sha Mo Ke here. Uh, if you notice, we have, you know, seven characters at the start and Meng Huo had more. Let's take a look at how many Sha Mo Ke has at his start. So see you guys there. 大王, 天下早已大乱, 中原诸侯并立, 争权夺利, 列土分疆, 连南境, 也无法逃脱他们贪婪的目光, 环顾周围, 目露大王, 将是您最大的威胁, 他随时可能入侵您的腹地, 我们必须先发制人再没有他的容身之所，大王，您犹如衔接蛮汉世界的桥梁，只有您同时了解南境部族和汉室，因此也只有您最适合成为他们的共主。Alrighty, same exact mission: unite the tribes. We have a character leaving due to satisfaction. This is played due to difficulty modifiers, but this doesn't always happen in my opinion. Actually, I've opened this up before and I have not seen this always happen. Uh, we have our situation. It's a very similar one. We don't have to worry about it. We also only have five tribe fealty, similar to Mu Lu. So basically, we are at 10 together and Meng Huo is at 9 at the start. So not very fair there. We also have only five characters here, six if you consider the one that doesn't leave on turn one, uh, which they shouldn't. This is our lovely wife, also Duosu's sister. Not super special, generic in terms of, you know, Naman characters. We have King Duosu who's joining us, which is nice. He's not super strong, but he has some, you know, interesting uh, mechanics for his unique units which we cannot recruit because we don't have his fealty the fealty belongs to a different faction so it's going to be awkward here right he has all the unique poison pipe uh, blowpipe units but then we can't actually utilize them we have Tai, so he is semi-unique or well, not really he's just a higher quality background he has this 50 point bonus background compared to the 15 um, but as a character, nothing too crazy here. He's the army that's standing in front of Mulu's army down south in Zhangke. And then we have Sha Moke himself, who starts out with the Red Wind from the Marriage Gift. 
this enables him to complete one of his set bonuses if you can get a overseer you can get the second one which is quite strong you would really want to get that one actually if you can get an overseer item fatigue immunity for whole own retinue uh, which with the new fatigue debuff to morale and attack damage if you're fatigued would definitely make your units even stronger at that point um, melee damage from melee infantry goes well with your faction unique unit so that kind of makes sense so you have a very strong leader but not much else going for you. You also only have three pieces of land in the beginning. You literally only have a level one Zonkla here that's in danger at the start. You have, oh actually, do you have another piece down here? No, he has it, right? So we only have one piece here getting attacked. You have Wu Ling and Fu Ling, all capitals, no counties, and all level one. That's how tough this start is. You have almost no sustainable income at this point because you have no counties for base incoming or, or random in, like income source like you don't have additional income sources from the additional counties all your capitals are level one so like you can't build much at this point you have to upgrade them it takes time to upgrade them and you don't have a lot of time because your neighbors are not very nice you have liu Bell, who is gigantic in this start and then to the north you have liu zhang's faction uh, who is also decently strong in this start and then to your west you have your two tribal you know friends enemies at this point you know you guys are not friends you guys are at war from turn one you also have no reform and you have the restrictions where only this one is you know deep enough where you don't have to unite all the tribes to get them so you want to attack the two other tribes in order to unlock these two pathways because this one's more battle focused and this one's more economic focus you're stuck with a diplomacy one, which is not going to help you in this current situation. Like, who are you going to use your diplomacy with? Liu Biao. Like, you're praying to keep Liu Biao as your friend. Because if the war blows up in the east, you're in really a tough situation. Like, this is probably the hardest start um, off the three for sure. But maybe even, you know, across the map, sure. I think Zhengjiang's start is incredibly difficult as well. Uh, Zhang Yan is not so hard because I can see a scenario where Zhang Yan can just blow past Gao Gan, meet Cao Cao, get the mercenary contract, stay here and fight, or just keep escaping and going to Shuofang and survive just fine. Here, you can't run away. Like, as Nanman faction, you have to unite the tribes. You have to try to get your reforms going by uniting the tribes. And in terms of Fiaty, we have five pretty useless ones. I mean, Jin Huan Sun Jie is with us, which is good because I know his unlocks. Um... Hmm, how do I check which unit he unlocked? Jin Huan Sun Jie has, I believe he has Sun Jiang, Sun Jiang units, which are poison blow dart units too. It's a different variation from Duo Si, I believe. Xin Yi, not that great. Zhang Ke, not that great. So yeah, that's just rough. We can probably check. Those are our special units. Maybe Jinhuan Sanjie doesn't have a unique unit. Oh, he starts out with a couple of Sanjiang units. Sanjiang unit is Duosi's unit. Then Duosi's fealty we don't own. So we don't actually get to recruit these, but these would be the ones we would boost and they would be the poison ones. Uh, but the good news is Might of the Valley is still incredibly strong and uh, definitely worth recruiting. But aside from that, really not much going for us and um, it's going to be a tough start for Chamo Coast faction in this start date. So hopefully you guys got a good idea of what the three Naman factions are doing in 200. Um, I don't actually recommend you playing them if you haven't in if you haven't played them at all this is not the start date to start things. Uh, you know 190 makes a lot of sense to experience the full Naman experience where all the tribes are still on the map and you get to conquer them one by one. You can experience some of the marriage event, dating event, and you can, uh, you definitely, right. My other question is, how do we use our faction unique mechanic? Okay, so technically everyone so far that we have gotten was from domination. Okay. Yeah, this is like, if we, take down a faction with five other fiaties do we get six points domination because i don't think we do hmm
Yeah, I don't know. We're gonna have to check that out. I think maybe you do get all six, because or else it just would be impossible, right? You would there would be no way for you to fill up your faction unique resource. For each tribe confederated. Right. Someone's gonna have to test this out. If it doesn't work, then it's a big problem because then you're just limited on how many you can do and more reason to play 190 with Shamokua because you can actually confederate more and then get to your maximum bonus. And um, yeah. So, and if you wanna go down the corporation route, if it doesn't count like that, then you can't even, you can't even vassalize. There's no way you can do this one. Cause you, can, you can't vassalize a faction that's dead, right? There's just no way. You can vassalize two factions. That's as far as you can get here. You can't get all 10 anymore. Hmm. Yeah, this is an awkward mechanic for the start. So I feel like if you want the experience, you're probably going to play 190 here. And going forward, it's going to get even weirder as you move closer. Like, what are they going to do when we have like a close to 220 start where you're preparing for the actual Naman Rebellion? Do you just hand all the land over to Meng Huo and give all the generals to him so that he can rebel against Zhuge Liang and Shu? Maybe. I mean, that's a question we can explore in the future, but some of these you know, design decisions as you move forward the dates will really mess with some of the mechanics that require you to have a lot of tribes uh, to utilize. Like we can't, we can't vassalize 10 factions now, so I don't know how that's going to work. But yeah, that's the three Naman factions. Hopefully you guys enjoy this overview and can't wait for the game to release tomorrow. We'll be playing our Cao Cao uh, series first on the 11th. It will come at a pretty random time. I'm going to have to wait to download the official uh, game release version. I don't want to play it on the pre-release version. And then afterward, I'll have to edit it and upload it. So expect it at a really random time. Starting on the 12th, it'll be more of a regular time. We'll move it back to uh, the morning time slot that we had before. For those of you who are waiting for Dynasty Warriors, it will come back next week when we will move back to Rebu's hypothetical run. I'm just taking a break this week to get done with all the previews. And as for uh, Mr. Smart Donkey and my co-op campaign, we'll start on the 12th. I haven't decided or we haven't decided what time it will go live, but it should be, you know, sometime on the 12th and we're aiming for three episodes a week right now at the start. So hopefully you guys will enjoy those and we'll see you guys when Fates Divided launch. Until then, bye.